Welcome YouTube subscribers. Today is my first multi-engine lesson where I get to fly one operating engine. Some may dread this moment as it is a Lego workout for some, but as you can see, I am having a blast. So before we get into the details, let's go ahead and get airborne, shall we? We'll do observation winds calm, uh, visibility 10 statute miles. We got a few clouds of 3,500, altimeter 3005. So 3005, and we're going to put this in here. 3005. Uh, yep, yep. Okay. Runway new, still left. Uh, 10,500 feet available, but we're probably going to be texting down. Uh, same uh, as, as always. Whiskey 3, Echo 3, cross 1 6 down, hold short 7 left, and then cross 7 left over the Papa. Uh, right turn on Papa, cross 1 6, all the way down to Papa 5 or 4, depends on which uh, one. So that's where we're going to uh, plan on doing our run-up, and then I'll do the passenger brief and, and go from there. Yeah, below 3,000. All right. Good morning, Daytona Clarence. Phoenix Air 802. We'd like to depart uh, to the North Practice Area. VFR at a blow of 3,000 with Tango. Say call sign only, please. Phoenix Air 802. Phoenix Air 02, Daytona clearance, maintain VFR, out of below 3000, departure frequency 125.8, squawk 0156. Maintain VFR, out of below 3000, departure frequency 125.8, squawk 0156, Phoenix Air 802. Phoenix Air 02, read back to right. Yay, alright, so let's... Transponder code 0156. Tower, Phoenix Air 802 is ready for departure at Papa 5. Phoenix Air 802, Daytona Tower, fly row heading, runway 7 left, Papa 5, clear for takeoff. Fly row heading, 7 left, clear for takeoff, Phoenix Air 802. That was quick. That was the quickest clearance I've ever had in a while. All right. light switches on. Air 14, Roger. Now I was really looking forward to this uh, lesson because I am just fascinated by flying with one engine that's not operating and the engine keeps flying straight and level. I, I don't know what's wrong with me but <laughs> I just thought that that was the coolest thing ever to be able to fly with just one engine uh, in a multi-engine aircraft obviously so uh, so here's me lining up and taking off. Easing forward. And power is full. Speed is alive. Engines are green. There's 50. 60. 70. Alright, check. And 80. go. 80, rotate. And blind brakes. Hormone is available. Gear up. Uh, picture for 90. Brutal 470, runway 7 right, taxi via Tango. 7 right via Tango for 470. Now unlike the Cessna, we're actually feeling the aircraft. Flying this one is literally flying by the numbers, memorizing checklist items, and going from there. But other than that, it's... I love flying this thing. Alright, climb checklist above uh, 500, so I'll pin it for 100. Power to 90%. Power to 90%. Picture 802, turn left, heading 030, contact departure. 030, over to departure, thanks for your help. Thanks, 02. Uh, this left fuel thing is a uh, false annunciation, alright? It okay. always comes on. Oh, okay. Alright. Alright, let's balance this throttle at 90%. 942, we have flag within sight with the other information. Alright, 98. Turn left, turn to St. Augustine. Yeah. Alright, uh, so throttle set, friction is set, trim is set for 100. I'm going to verify our uh, transponder is on uh, uh, altitude. And fuel pumps off, landing lights off, climb checklist complete. Excellent. Oh, contact departure. Oh, yeah. Uh, they turn departure, Phoenix here, 802 is at uh, 1,600, climb to 3,000. Phoenix, two-day tone of departure, I don't. I don't think 802. Phoenix, there's a two radar contact, two stay tone, join the beach north. Join the beach north, Phoenix here, 802. 
All right, so he gave you a right engine failure. What will you do? All right, so uh, maintain directional control. Uh, right engine, uh, right foot, right engine dead. I'm gonna go ahead and full, full, yeah, uh, don't full, lose clouds. All right. full power. And then pitch for 85. Uh, maintain your 4.5 at okay. all cost. Okay, uh, maintain 4.5. Alright, right, so now we're going to troubleshoot, um, so I'm going to... Yeah, once you identify, oh, verify, you right, once I verify, right, alright, so I'm going to go back to 60. Uh, I can give you 70, 70 is right. fine. 70, alright, 70, uh, I'm going to alternate air, oh, actually this is going to be back, alternate air on, um, gas, make sure, make sure uh, gas is 5 degrees uh, difference, and uh, we can cross feed if necessary, uh, switch the, uh, switch the right voter. Uh, to A or B while I'm trying to maintain altitude. Then check circuit breakers and circuit breakers are all in. Still not working. I'm going to again verify right right foot dead, right engine dead. Going to right master switch off, uh, right alternator off, uh, ECU back to auto, uh, right fuel pump off, and then right, uh, right. right fuel pump. Alright, we're going to shut it down. So put your timer on. Okay. Uh, timer start. Alright. Right, master off. Go. Okay. Do it, sir. All right. <laughs> All right, master is off. So climb to 4,500. Okay, 4,500. Pitch for 85. Yeah, pitch slide for 85. Good. 85. Uh, climbing very good. <laughs> All right, getting close to at four thousand five hundred. He's in sure. All right, so we're gonna restart the engine. Good. Okay. So restart below hundred knots. Right master on and key start. Right key go. He balance the throttle. All good. Woo. Yeah. All right. Let's do. <laughs> yeah. Let's do a steep turn. So. Okay. Then we go. Twin star pilots or CFIs. How do you think I did? Now keep in mind, this is my very first time attempting this. So I literally drive about an hour to work each and every day. Um, so I'm flying out of Daytona, but I actually live in St. Augustine. So I drive about an hour, so during the hour drive, I literally chair fly, or I, I guess I should say car fly, um, while I'm driving on the highway, and I'm just doing the checklist items over and over and over again. So that's how, this really helps me in re memorizing all the checklist items and everything. There's a lot of folks that ask me, hey, so what's next after your multi-engine? Are you going to be a CFI next? I'm like, heck no. I, I do not have patience for, I am just not a teaching type of guy, I'm just, I, I will get angry and I will slap the student for doing something stupid, I, I just don't have any, <laughs> I envy all of the CFIs that are out there, but am I going to be a CFI? No, I don't think, well maybe if I'm maybe retired from the airlines or something like that, um, and maybe being a CFI for you know, part 61 or, three. yeah, you know, maybe, I, I'm, let me think about it then, but right now, mm-mm, mm-mm, no, mm-mm. First of all, I am a huge fan of common sense and logic. Um, I kind of want to, you know, make common sense common again. That's literally <laughs> what I want to do, but it's kind of hard to apply common sense when you're under pressure, you got the tower yelling at you, you know, your CFI is yelling at you, and you have maybe two or three hours of flying, and yeah, you're going to do something stupid, and, and uh, I don't know, maybe maybe in the future, but as of right now, no, no, I, I, don't, I don't think so. Maybe, maybe DCS, you know, Digital Combat Simulator for all you DC, DCS flyers. Uh, that's, that's literally about it. Maybe a ground instructor, you know, I can probably do that, but yeah, I'm a big fan of common sense, especially when I'm driving on the highway. See all these cars driving in the, in slow in the left lane, like why would you drive, it's like the basic 
rules of driving, folks. Like, what, I mean, it's like the, it, I don't even know if they cover that in driver's ed anymore or, or what. Just like using your blinker when you're changing lanes. I mean, I don't know. I have really bad road rage because, you know, I drive long distances every day. But, um, but yeah, I, I, anyway, sorry, sorry. I'm getting a little off topic here. Previously, those were steep turns that you were seeing. Now we're going to be landing with one, well, simulated, one operating engine. All right, very good. Uh, rudder center, uh, three green, no red, seatbelts on. Checklist all right. is complete. Keep uh, some altitude, all right. Foot, uh, easy on the back. Yeah, don't lose your altitude. Don't lose, okay. Uh, all right, easy on the left foot, it's too much. Black and traffic, okay. 19668, crossing on 117 via altitude. Uh, black and traffic. All right, so now nice. I can probably put in some flaps? Yeah, now you can put flaps. One only. Okay. Good. Do your guns check, please. All right, uh, fuel on, rudder, three green, no red, seatbelts on. Black of traffic, uh, 10 star, 508 Papa Alpha is on final runway 9, black of traffic. All right, now you can start releasing your throttle. Now put your right foot. Uh -huh. Good. Yeah, keep moving. All right, now you can start balancing both throttle, kind of. Okay. And yeah, in the flare, you have both throttle. Okay. All right, pick up both, reducing, close down, close down. Right, one, two, three. All idle. Very good. All right, easy, center line. All right, flap stop. Let's go, touch and go. Swords, 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 easy. Hey, speed 7, 2, right, go. And 80, realty. Right. Do one and more, then we'll head back. Okay, and brakes, gear up. This is not available. It's not relaxing and easy. I thought Mac was going to go down, so I don't have to press VL. Look at that, nice. I love, love this. November. We're about uh, six knot miles to east uh, of the south part of the Lake Crescent. Uh, almost to 5,000 to maneuvering. Daytona Approach, Phoenix Air 802, we're about one mile west of Flagler at 3000. Uh, with uniform, we'd like to request full stop. Phoenix Air 802, Daytona First, Quark 0174. 0174, Phoenix Air 802. Phoenix Air 802, radar contact, 100 miles southwest of Flagler, Daytona Altimeter 3006, center left stage, from my 7 left. And, uh, left base, 7 left, Phoenix Air 802. Hey, uh, yeah, I, I love. This never gets old. Yeah. This and do this and forever. Airdrome Tower Phoenix Air 802 is at uh, descending through 2500. Phoenix Air 802, Daytona Tower, runway 7 left, clear to land. Runway 7 left, clear to land. Phoenix Air 802. I'm going to put on flaps right when I'm below uh, one. All right, 33, flaps coming down. And approach only. And this is another landing back in KDAB, Daytona Beach, with one operating engine simulated. Okay, final check. Three green, no red. Fuel pumps on. Uh, rudder is centered. Seat bounce on. Got a checklist complete. All right, easing back power for 90. And you ease your foot also. Okay. Yeah, you can put the right foot on standby. No brakes. All right. Now you start reducing your left. Not reduce, reduce. Yeah. All right, big boots, throttle. And both bottles in hand. Yeah. And throttle. ease and back power. All right. Or is that idle? All right, let's roll. Let's roll. Hit roll. Uh, okay. Long landing. Okay. I'll just take advantage of. 
Six Air Eight Zero Two. You can continue down to uh, runway one six. All right, continue down to uh, one six Phoenix Air Eight Zero Two. Nice. It's making life easy for us. Yeah. Phoenix Air 802, turn left runway 16, turn runway 16, Whiskey 3 to the ramp, remain this frequency. Okay, you're being on this frequency, you're going to make, make a left on uh, 16 and another left on Whiskey 3. Phoenix Air 802, thanks for your help. No problem. So there you have it. I have uh, landed us safely back to the ground, and uh, I guess I can't say there you have it. Isn't that that, uh, that bartender, that uh, YouTube bartender? I forgot what was his... Uh, you know, the bartender with all the girls on there. Um, was it Tipsy Bartender, I think? I don't know. And then, you know, when I looked at my last video, the one I, uh, that I just posted about the walkthrough, I ended it with, uh, what, Fly Safe. That's why I normally ended it with. And then I was looking at some uh, Scott Manley videos, and that's how he ends all his videos. So I was like, hmm, maybe I should, like, think of another way to end my videos with something unique. Anyway, back on the ground, flying the Twin Star is really easy, really. All you need is a little bit of logic and common sense and, you know, memorize the checklist, chair fly or car fly like I do every day and, and you'll be just fine. Just don't try to overcomplicate things. Just make it simple. Like one plus one equals two. Don't be like one of those people that's like, well, if you take a 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 and then you put uh, 0 0.75 and 0 0.25, you technically get two also. Dude, no. One and one is two. Keep it simple. I, <laughs> I, I hope that analogy makes sense. But anyway, back on subject. Um, hmm. What should my next video be? Um, hmm. Comments, comments below. Comments. I'm always looking forward to your comments. Um, I'm always looking forward to any kind of critiques, especially for your CFIs out there. You know, uh, seriously, tell me how I did. I think what I'm done with this rating, what I'm actually going to be looking into is probably cargo flying or um, aerial survey pilot flying or something like I can actually put the skills put these skills to use maybe banner towing since I got my tail wheel recently this is almost like a uh, tail wheel where you have to a rudder you have to pull full right rudder but to line up you just let off the left rudder and it goes straight but a tail wheel you have to when you let go of the left you have to compensate for the right to, oh, yeah. to straighten it back up and this is kind of like the same thing I think it's tedious to taxi on the tail wheel right like, like it's still going. Like I have to do left to to straighten up. I mean, it's you you constantly are doing this with your feet uh, on the uh, on the tail wheel. But I mean, I think it makes you a better pilot because you actually use your feet more. Yeah. No, I definitely didn't use my feet as much when I was flying the Cessna. But uh, it helps me even when I'm flying this. Like when I was doing the uh, the engine failures, it really helped because I was to, to uh, coordinate and everything. So ready at Papa four seven left. All right, clear. All right. So as always, if you are still here, we are 18 minutes into the video. <laughs> if you're still here, I just wanted to thank you for sticking with me. We are now back on the ground safely. Going to go ahead and take this parking spot over here to the left here. So let me know what you want to see next. Um, I'm going to be honest with you, I'm probably not going to be flying the Cessna anytime soon. It just doesn't really interest me <laughs> anymore. I mean, unless I have to fly it for a job, obviously. But, you know, I, I like flying the Sport Cruiser. I like flying the Twin Star. I like flying the uh, you know, Cetabria. Um, I got in the, in the Decathlon the other day, and I did not know that the Cetabria and the Decathlon were literally the same exact uh, aircraft. The only thing different in the, in the Decathlon was it had a... Uh, there's my flight instructor saying that, hey, wait, do the checklist. You can't just shut it down like that. <laughs> anyway, the only difference between the Decathlon and the Cetabria is uh, the Cetabria is, a, is a, a fixed propeller and the Super Decathlon is a constant speed prop. So you have a, a propeller uh, um, uh, lever in the uh, Decathlon. That's literally the only difference between the two. I do plan on flying that here pretty soon. Hopefully I'll get checked out and uh, probably post that. And if I do, that will probably, probably be my next video. Well, I'll wrap up this video by saying thank you in advance for liking and subscribing. Keep flying, keep learning, and have fun. How's that? Is that good? Good? <laughs>